Hi, I'm Doug. I make Canadian personal finance videos and review videos here on YouTube. And I've talked a lot about REITs, which are real estate investment trusts, and they make a big part of my dividend focused portfolio on Wealthsimple. Now, I've always said in my videos that I'm a beginner. I don't really know what I'm doing. And this proves that. And it's a painful learning experience. TNT, which is True North Real Estate Investment Trust, they cut their dividend or distribution by 50% going from around five cents per month to 2.5 cents. And of course, by cutting their dividend, their stock price also went down by almost half from something like six, seven dollars around that down to three dollars and 50 cents, I think it was today. I didn't see this coming and that makes sense because I wasn't even looking. When I first chose this REIT, I was looking at a couple things. I was looking at the stock price and the yield because I'm pretty greedy and the yield was nice and high. And I went on the TNT website, I looked at the properties that they held and their tenants. Real Estate Investment Trust, the current yield with that one is 8.22%. TNT and INO are two of them that I've bought a lot recently. For example, since my last video in May, I bought 134 shares of TNT, which now has a yield of almost 9.5%. Why I like TNT? They have 46 properties across Canada, 96% occupancy rates. Everything that I did was just qualitative and I was going a lot on feeling, which I don't recommend doing, but that's what a lot of beginners like me do. And this is what it gets. I saw a lot of things that were promising to me. They had real estate in prime locations in Toronto, uh, Ottawa, in Quebec, in Alberta, in all these different locations, and it was office space. Another thing that was promising were the tenants. To me, government tenants made a lot of sense because they're, they were less likely to move to a work from home model. I was kind of wrong about that, but in my mind, it was just, they're kind of antiquated. They rely on a lot of processes that require paper. They're gonna be less likely to allow people to work from home. We have seen them introduce a more flexible work from home option in a lot of cases. The other benefit to having government tenants in my mind was they're never going to miss a rent payment where with retail renters, sometimes a store might not be doing well because of, you know, the pandemic and stuff and they might not make their rent payments, but the government, they supply the money. So they're not gonna miss their rent payments. That was my, my thought process at the time. So now today after the cut, of course, I've done some more substantial research on TNT and tried to learn how to analyze a REIT properly. But of course I'm late doing that and it cost me $750, which is about 50%. I also should have clued in when this happened last year with Innovalis that was in a very similar situation. So fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. How does that expression go? It says fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. So when picking a read, it's good practice to look top-down analysis and also do bottom-up analysis. Top-down, you're looking at the sector and how that's performing overall. And bottom-up, you're looking at the fundamentals of a specific company. So in our case, that's gonna be TNT. So for top-down, what will we look at? We would look at real estate, office real estate, and how that's doing in Canada right now. So my assumption before was that the government's not gonna let everybody work from home. They're still gonna require office space. But what I failed to consider was that the private sector, which would do that, is going to free up so much office space in all these major cities that companies, companies will choose to allow their employees to work from home. So they're not going to renew their leases or they may even cancel them early and pay a penalty if it makes financial sense to do that. So we have an abundance of open office space that is not being used. And when you have an abundance of supply and so little demand, in order to make things work, you gotta drop the price. So the rental prices are dropping. So that means the tenants have more power to look elsewhere. And if they do still need office space, they can find somewhere else that's cheaper. And sometimes it's gonna make sense for them to break a lease early to pay the penalty because in the long run, they're gonna be saving by finding this cheaper rent. Right now, the supply is bigger than the demand where before in a city like Toronto, real estate, office real estate specifically was very scarce and it was very expensive. So we're seeing that drop now. So as part of this top-down analysis, what is the outlook like for office space in Canada in the future? I'm gonna put a quote up here that I got from an article that says office vacancy rates are on the rise. JLL figures show a global vacancy rate of 14.5% with Europe at 7.2% 
Asia Pacific at 14.1% and the US at 19.1% in the third quarter. That's for 2022. That's scary. I think we can uh, align ourselves with the US because they're our neighbor and we you know, culturally operate in a very similar way to them. In my opinion, I think office space will make a rebound, but of course that's just my personal opinion. Um, we need social face-to-face -face interactions. I've read some articles recently about retirees and what they regret now that they're at the end of their life. And some of them talked about the social interactions that they miss, what they used to get out of work. When they retired, they weren't seeing these people that they consider friends every day uh, anymore, or at least five days a week. And so since they didn't kind of carry those relationships over to, you know, outside the workplace, they lacked that social interaction. And as humans, that's what we need. We need some face-to-face -face interaction and it might've been convenient and it might've been nice to have a break from that and to do Zoom calls, but we can't do that all the time. So that's one of the reasons why I think the office space will see a rebound. Another factor is we were so fearful of COVID. Now we're comfortable with it. It's become just another part of life, you get sick, you get better, you come back to work. And uh, I go to work, I see people face to face, and um, I like it. So flexible hybrid models where people work from home for a couple days a week, but also have to go to the office a couple days a week, that still requires office space. Um, maybe not as much if you have that flexible workspace where you don't have your own desk, but you share it and other people are going to use it on the days that you're not there. So they may need less office space, but office space is still required. Here's another thing to consider. Interest rates, they're on the rise and that's affected the housing market. There have been less transactions, less sales actually going on and sellers who are used to not having to negotiate for a lower price they don't want to do that now either. So instead they may decide, I'm just going to hold on to this property until things change instead of, okay, I'm going to give you what you want. I will pay for your home inspection. I will do all this. And it's a similar situation for these bigger properties, these office properties, the sales, the transaction numbers are really shrinking. If a REIT is to grow, it needs to do a couple things. It needs to acquire properties, increase occupancy and or increase rent. If it can't do that, it can't grow. We have companies that are ending their leases early. They are not choosing not to renew their leases. And now we have an abundance of supply and not a lot of demand. So that's driving rental prices down. So those things for growth that I just mentioned with REITs, it's, there's not a lot of that that can happen right now. My hope is that that'll turn around in about a year or so, and hopefully we'll see things move in the right direction. I've read the profiles of the CEO and the board of directors for TNT, and I'm impressed with their credentials, and I have some trust and, and faith in them that they'll be able to turn things around uh, when the conditions are right. Now, here's more on the fundamental analysis, the bottom-up analysis for TNT, and I'll just say I've never been good with numbers, and this is something that's pretty complicated for me to understand, so... Again, beginner, there are metrics that can kind of give a signal or a little prediction that things aren't going well. And one of those is the payout ratio for a real estate investment trust. You calculate the payout ratio by taking the REIT's dividend rates and dividing that by the estimated price of adjusted funds from operations per share. So to qualify as a REIT, a company needs to have a payout ratio of 90%. But TNT's ratio was 115% last year well above 90%. And for the fourth quarter of 2022, it was 127%. So in order to sustain a dividend that is well over what they're making, um, they're going to have to dip into the cash reserves. And uh, you can only do that for so long. A company won't be able to sustain paying out dividends beyond what it's bringing in. And we saw that with, with Innovalis last year with uh, a payout of almost 200%. I won't get into the details of explaining FFO, fixed funds from operations and adjusted FFO because I barely understand these myself. I've just started learning about this today, but if you're interested in also learning about it, I've put some links to Investopedia articles and lessons in the description below, so check those out. Continuing this uh, fundamental analysis of TNT, occupancy rates have dropped from 2021 to 2022, going from 96% occupancy to 93%. And an article on Seeking Alpha, which I'll also link in the description, says that to just keep occupancy static, 
it needs to renew nearly 1 million square feet per year. And in 2022, they fell short of that by quite a bit by only renewing around 600,000 square feet. TNT recently sold two properties, one in the GTA and one in downtown Ottawa. Both were almost vacant. Uh, the one in the GTA they bought in 2013 and the one in Ottawa they bought in 2019. So they didn't hold on to that one for very long. Um, and one of the main tenants in that was Corrections Canada. I don't know where they've moved to now. Hopefully with the money from these sales and the cut to the dividend that affects us, uh, hopefully we can see things turn around. I wanna see this dividend inch back up in a year or so, and I hope the stock price follows as well. So right now, what I'm gonna do is start looking at other REITs. Innovalis and True North, we're both very focused on office real estate, but there are so many other options out there that are booming right now or have the potential to boom. And one of them is healthcare properties or healthcare facilities and labs. Um, self-storage, data centers, and some industrial uh, real estate too. Maybe we'll see these office-focused REITs expand into residential, even convert some of their existing office properties to residential. If you've looked at any news about immigration in Canada, they have set high targets and the population is growing through immigration. We don't have enough houses. We can't keep up building houses fast enough to house all these people. And uh, the other thing that is beneficial here is when people move to Canada, they don't want to move to the middle of Saskatchewan or to remote rural places in like the territories or anything like that. Most of them are coming to the major cities. And what do we have in major cities? Lots of offices. So if you can convert those to residential, there's some potential there. There's some earning potential there. We can see things turn around. So hopefully, you know, they're making good decisions and uh, profitable decisions too. There is a trend that when interest rates rise, that is good news for real estate investment trusts focused on the residential sector because less people are able to afford buying a home and paying those high mortgage rates. So instead more people are renting. And what do we know about rent is the rent gets increased usually every year. So my takeaway, you can be two types of investor. As a beginner investor, you can either drive yourself or you can put it on cruise control with maybe some lane assist. So if you've got cruise control on, you're putting your money in a few ETFs that you've done your research in and you check in on them a couple times a year. If you're driving yourself, you're picking your stocks on your own. And in that case, you need to keep your eyes on the road. In your free time at home and on breaks at work, you need to be checking quarterly reports. You need to be reading articles from trusted sources and make changes to your portfolio accordingly. So I've picked stocks and I have not put in the work. And so now I'm paying the price. So over the next while, I'm going to reevaluate all my holdings in this portfolio and do some basic analysis to determine if I should hold on to what I got or sell it or buy more. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope focusing on one company and talking about this was something that interests you. I will be back very soon with an update of my February uh, 2023 portfolio update, talk about the dividends that I earned and what the portfolio's value is right now. We've been suffering a lot ever since uh, SVB and all that stuff has been going on. So um, I thank you for subscribing. We hit 700 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and discuss with me in the comments. I wanna hear what your thoughts are on TNT and how the market's doing right now. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.